Hello and welcome. Uh, in our previous video, we, we created a Docker file and a Docker Compose uh, set a configuration file, and we were able to start up our containers. And I'll resume from there. We had an issue when you we were starting up our Docker container whereby we were encountering an error uh, saying that it cannot connect to this server. And uh, I'll just open the project and uh, this is the settings file here. Yeah? So the problem is on this host. So the host should not be this, it should be, it should be the local host as stated here, it should be the name of the container. So the container that has been created in this case, I believe it's a database or database one. Uh, I can confirm that by just clicking on these containers. And uh, that is, uh, I'm going to use that as the as the uh, host. Uh, so primarily, the host's name should be. In short, it should be what we have put here as the Docker Compose in the Docker Compose as the service name. So the service name is database. So we should put this database as the host name. Uh, let's do that. Uh, we have just copied it from the Docker Compose into the settings and I've replaced it here with the, where we had put the local host IP address. So I'll just save and after I've saved, let's see what happens. Yeah, so we have another error which states that uh, connection to the server at database that uh, port 5432 failed, password authentication failed for user uh, root. So there's no problem. Let's see if we can be able, first of all, to access our our, con our container in the browser. So we seem not to be able to connect. So let's see how we can solve this uh, this challenge or this pr problem that we have here. As a workaround, I tried to uh, edit the settings.py file for the project, and I made an, an edit or I replaced the name, user and password to refer to the environment variables for the Postgres name, Postgres user and Postgres password in the settings.py file. And then uh, in some cases, like in this recent Django, we do not have this OS. So at the top of your file, you need to add this import OS uh, so that it can import the, that, that uh, library. And then we will use it in the name, user, and password. And uh, the, it's going to fetch these environment variables, uh, Postgres name, Postgres user, or the user of the database, and the Postgres password, as opposed to hard coding the, the values here. But we are going to see about the environment variables later. Uh, the, and now the other amendment that uh, we are going to make, we are going to uh, create these two uh, environment variables. Uh, we had only created the Postgres password, so we are going to create one for Postgres user and Postgres uh, database. So these environment variables are the ones that are being uh, pointed to in these uh, settings.py file. So this is under the database service. So you'll create an, uh, you'll add the Postgres DB and Postgres user environment variables. So the other, we'll also do the same for the web service that we had created. We will also create these uh, three variables, uh, Postgres DB, Postgres user, and Postgres password. Uh, one thing to note, uh, one thing worth mentioning is that this is not the best approach to uh, handle the passwords and, you know, and usernames and authentication. But we're going to see uh, as we continue to develop our website a better way or a standard practice that is supposed to, to be followed. But this for now it works and maybe as of trying to bring the concept uh, into understanding this is what uh, this is where we begin with. This is what we'll begin with. So I'm going to start my container. I think I can run the Docker Compose app. Uh, and in a detached mode. So I like using the command line interface together with the dashboard. 
uh, but you can also stick to the dashboard alone if you're okay with it. So it's very, it has started very fast and you can see that we have uh, our jungle here that is started and it's running on port 8000, but this is inside the container. Remember that in my docker.compose.yml file, I specified the host port as 80. So this is inside the container. This is a container port that has been exposed to the host machine and the host machine I have set it to 80, port 80. So you can use your dashboard. If you're using your dashboard, you can navigate into the container section and you can maybe click on this drop down arrow. And then in my website, the web service is this arrow here that shows open with browser. So it will automatically open uh, the web page and you can see this is the same page that you had seen. So we have been able to run uh, a Django application uh, from within uh, Docker, or we have been able to Dockerize our Django uh, project. And uh, this uh, marks the end of uh, this tutorial. And I, uh, I would recommend that you go through the uh, documentation for Docker to understand more on some of those concepts. Uh, because uh, this is not a Docker tutorial, so we are not going to really go deep into those uh, some of those concepts. So back to the uh, these files. So we are going to add these files uh, into the version control. And the first thing we are going to do, we are going to use git uh, status, and uh, you note that it will say that there are files that have been added and others which have been modified. We have made modifications into the Docker file. Actually, these are new files. Sorry, these are the ones that we created. And uh, we have also modified the pip file.lock because of adding psycho pg2. And we have also made amendments into the docker compose.yml. And then we have also edited the settings.py file. So I'm going to add the files just in git add and a dot so it will add all those files and then i will do a git commit and i'll add a message and i'll say that uh, i've dockerized uh, my website project and then i'll add that commit message by clicking enter and then i'll push it to github by using git push. Yeah, so it uh, has successfully pushed the changes or the commits and we can refresh inside here and you'll see that we have additional files that have been added. So that said, I will uh, move to, in the next tutorial, we are going to see how we can uh, proceed. And I believe that we, we may have a look at uh, the Django user model uh, before we work on our uh, our models for the uh, project or for the app. You can probably stop your container if you're not using it. Uh, containers rather, or your project if you're not using it, and then you can start it uh, as you proceed with the development. Thank you for watching.